Hi, I'm Steven with CNC Labs, and welcome to my garage shop. Let's make the Austrian Armed Forces Jagd Commander Dagger. I'll show you the materials I choose, the tool paths I'm going to create, I'm going to download a 3D model, and then once it's all finished, we'll pull it off the vortex and we'll finish it and sand it. Let's make that dagger. For materials, I'm using a 270 millimeter piece of maple that has a diameter of 45 millimeters. We will be using the faceplate to mount this to the headstock, and I am going to be using the surfacing tool to round this down. Think of this as a roughing pass. Once we've run the job, we're going to be utilizing some different grades of sandpaper and this circular file to knock out those holes in the center of the blade. We'll start by hand by using the 100 grit and move up to the 220. If there's any spots I can use my electric, I'll use my little mouse at 120 and then 240. Once we've sanded it all down nicely, we're gonna finish it with a little bit of stain, a mini wax wood finish espresso. Enough about the materials, let's make this dagger. I'm creating a new file in VCarve Pro selecting a rotary job and entering my dimensions. Then I import my 3D model and scale the model to fit the material. I do want to leave some space for tabs, however, so I adjust the length to 260 millimeters and the diameter to 35 millimeters. Okay, looking good so far. Popping into the 2D view now and grabbing some tabs from Clipart. I'm adding a total of four rectangle tabs and one circular tab. The circle tab will hold the tip along with three rectangle finger tabs that I rotate and tuck alongside the blade tip. The last rectangle tab will hold the handle. I might even keep it on the finished model as a sort of end knob for the dagger. You can see how the tip is supported here with these three finger tabs. Shouldn't be too difficult to remove with a nice sharp point and the Dremel that I have. Now it's time to add our tool path. I click on the egg on a plate icon, also known as the 3D finishing toolpath. I'm using a quarter inch tapered ball nose bit with a 9% step over and 6,000 millimeters per minute feed rate. Select raster as your strategy and ensure you have the raster angle set to 90 degrees. This starts the job at the tip of the dagger and is key to ensure that your model doesn't break. 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 Then I calculate the tool path and preview it. You can see the bit move from right to left, so we can save and run this G code file in GSender now. I begin by removing the faceplate and cutting off the handle tab. Next, I use a Dremel to cut along the flat parts of the blade tip. Then I remove the three tab fingers entirely. With them out of the way, I cut into the button tab until the tip is free. Using a 100 grit sanding block, I take down all of the rough spots in this initial sanding stage. To clean up the holes in the blade, I use a small drill bit on all three sides of the dagger to poke through the hole entirely. Once we've drilled out the holes in the blade, they can use a bit of cleaning up. So I use a small cylinder file to remove any jagged bits. 
Then it's time to sand, sand, sand. I start with 100 grit, then move up to 220 until everything's nice and smooth. Finally, I hit the dagger with some espresso colored stain. I only leave it on for about 15 minutes, then I wipe it dry. And here we have it, our tri-bladed dagger on a custom-made stand. What daggers have you made? What do you want to make? Join me for the next episode of Let's Make, where I make a Thor hammer. We'll see you then.